ಅಸ್ಮದ್ಗುರೋದ್ಭಗವತೋಸ್ಯದಯಕಸಿಂಧೋರಾಮಜಸ್ಯ ಚರಣ ಶರಣ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯೆ ಮಾತಾ ಪಿತಾ ಯುವತಯಸ್ತಮಯ ವಿಭೂತಿ ಯದೇವ ನಿಯಮೇನ ಮದನ್ವಯಾಂ ಆದ್ಯ ಕುಲಪತೇರ್ವಕುಳಾಭಿರಾಮ ಶ್ರೀಮತ್ತದಂಘ್ರೀವಳಂ ಪ್ರಣಮಿ ಮೂಧ್ನ ಭೂತ ಸರಶ್ಚ ಮಹದಾಹ್ವಯ ಭಟ್ಟನಾಥ ಶ್ರೀ ಭಕ್ತಿಸಾರ ಕುಲಶೇಖರ ಯೋಗಿ ವಾಹನ್ ಭಕ್ತಾಂಘ್ರಿರೇಣು ಪರಕಾಲ ಯತೀಂದ್ರ ಮಿಶ್ರಾನ್ ಶ್ರೀಮತ್ ಪರಾಂಕುಶ ಮುನಿ ಪ್ರಣತೋಸ್ಮಿ ನಿತ್ಯ ಶ್ರೀಮನ್ ವೆಂಕಟನಾಥಾರ್ಯ ಕವಿತಾರ್ಕಿಕೇಸರಿ ವೇದಾಂತಾಚಾರ್ಯ ವ್ಯೋ ಮೇ ಸನ್ನಿಧತ್ತ ಸದಾ ಹೃದಯ ಇನ್ ದ ಪ್ರೀವಿಯಸ್ ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ ವಿ ಸೋ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಪೆರಿಯಾಳ್ವಾರ್ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಚಿತ್ತ ಆಸ್ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತ್ ವಿ ಸೋ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಬರ್ತ್ ಹೌ ಹಿ ಪರ್ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಸರ್ವಿಸ್ ಟು ಭಗವಾನ್ ವಿತ್ ಫ್ಲವರ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವಿತ್ ತುಳಸಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಸೋ ಆನ್ and how he got to meet the king the king who was confused after listening to a saint the saint had told him that <clears throat> o king you have done so many things for your own welfare however you should do something for <coughs> the welfare of not just your current life but something for your atma that would do eternal good so varshartham ashtau prayate tamasan ratri artham artham divasam yateta bardhakya hetor vayasa anvena paratra hetor iha janmana cha <coughs> just like how people invest 8 months of the year to enjoy for 4 months how they invest all the time in the day by working so that they can take rest at night <coughs> how they work in young age so that they can take rest in old age in the same way you have to invest during this life to be taking rest rest as in not the nirguna state but rest as in void of tapatraya void of adhyatmika adi daivika adi bhautika dukhas void of any trouble any kind of problem void of janma samsara sagar that kind of a situation for that reason what is the parama purushartha the king started thinking he <coughs> asked he asked his purohita and his purohita summoned all the vidwans there there periyalwar had also attended and he explained that parama purushartha is moksha moksha is attained through sharanagati and so on and having given crystal clear explanations and answered all the questions of everybody periyalwar the ended up <coughs> making the king very happy so the king gave him gifts and he gave him a ride on the elephant and all of that we also discussed about why confusion persists in the mind of in the minds of believers this king was already a hindu these days we seem to know that uh, krishna has said mamekam uh, sharanam raja so sharadu sharanagati amtva sarva pape bhyo moksha ishyami ma shucha have no doubt about it krishna has said very clearly it seems to obvious to us but why is it that in those days so many people were unable to think about it as a matter of fact even today many people are unable to understand it Uh, that simply has to do with their own karma those who have done enough good karma those who have already shown some level of bhakti those who have been uh, morally good uh, and have been uh, doing good things to others they eventually they have eventually arrived at a good state wherein they are able to get appropriate knowledge and with that appropriate knowledge they are able to take the appropriate action <clears throat> that being said let us move on to the tirupallandu periyalwar is famous for composing periyalwar tirumuli at the start of periyalwar tirumuli comes what is called tirupallandu tiru is of course a prefix given for respect in sanskrit tiru means shri 
பல்லாண்டு ஆண்டு மீன்ஸ் இயர் பல்லாண்டு மீன்ஸ் மெனி மெனி இயர்ஸ் வை டு வி கால் தட் பர்டிகுலர் செட் ஆஃப் வேர்சஸ் அட் த பிகனிங் ஆஃப் பெரியாழ்வார் திருமொழி அஸ் திருப்பல்லாண்டு இட் இஸ் பிகாஸ் ஹி சேஸ் பல்லாண்டு பல்லாண்டு மெனி டைம்ஸ் சோ மெனி டைம்ஸ் ஹி சேஸ் இட் நவ் வென் ஹி சேஸ் பல்லாண்டு வாட் டஸ் ஹி ரியலி இம்ப்ளை He is not praising Bhagavan. Oh, 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 great Bhagavan, you have been here since forever. That is not what he is saying. He describes Bhagavan and prays that no harm comes to him in any way. This is, this is not a kind of prayer then. This is a kind of blessing, right? May no harm come to you. If a person says in that way, it would not count as prayer it would count as blessing so what the alvar did here is giving blessings to bhagavan bhagavan has arrived in front of the alvar to bless him right as the alvar you can see in the image the uh, the background image the alvar is going on the elephant bhagavan arrives on garuda with his consort with his nitya suri is also which is not visible in the image but he arrives with the complete retinue he gives complete darshan to the alvar but a question arises how can a jeevatma bless paramatma paramatma can bless us or elders can bless younger people what do we normally see in the world i fall at the feet of my parents my parents bless me i fall at the feet of my grandparents they bless me i see some other elders in the family i fall at their feet so <clears throat> one criterion or one qualification to give blessing appears to be age another qualification is sainthood correct if i go fall at the feet of a saint the saint blesses me or i fall at the feet of an acharya that acharya blesses me if i fall at the feet of a bhagavata there bhakti becomes the qualification due to a high level of bhakti he that bhagavata gets a greater qualification than me and is able to give me blessings all of that is fine but in all the cases we are to assume that the person who is giving the blessing is superior to the person receiving the blessing is that not so let us look at the story of vishnu and garuda garuda <clears throat> wanted to overpower vishnu correct it is a leela of course why would garuda really want to overpower vishnu what really happened that day was that garuda tried to overpower vishnu vishnu was willing to give a boon to garuda on the orders of his mother vinata who had become a slave of her uh, what do you say the another wife of her husband kadru kadru had made her sons to cheat in order to win the bet that she had with vinata as a result vinata became a slave of kadru garuda was born to relieve her one of the reasons for his birth as per the desire of vinata herself was to bring her out of this shameful situation garuda went to devaloka he was extremely powerful he was born with the blessings of his father <clears throat> he was born with a lot of blessings in fact so he was able to 
easily get hold of Amruta. Indra and the others were all trying to stop him. But even Indra could not stop Garuda. Even the Vajrayuda did not work properly. Indra ended up requesting Garuda. Please don't let the serpents to drink the nectar. Of course, Garuda was not willing to give them the nectar. <clears throat> but how Garuda played a game shows his intelligence. So Garuda placed the Amrita in the middle of all the serpents because that was the requirement. Uh, when he asked, what should I do to free my mother? This is what they had said. Bring the Amrita. Bring the Amrita Kalasha and we will free your mother. He agreed. He brought the Amrita Kalasha. He placed it. Everybody was happy. They declared, you are free. Your mother is free. But when the snakes were <clears throat> about to uh, go and uh, have that uh, Amrita, at that point of time, he said, no, no, you cannot consume it immediately. You have to first do the appropriate ritual. Go and perform the ablutions. They went, they went towards the water at that time. <clears throat> the Amrita Kalasha was returned to Indra. The smartness combined with the physical prowess of Garuda was praised by Vishnu. Vishnu said, let me give you a boon. Remember, Vishnu, the Almighty, tells Garuda that he will give him a boon. Garuda, at that time, <clears throat> does not appear to have immediately asked for his lotus feet. The story, as presented, is slightly different. Garuda said, I need immortality, but I need a position above you. Now, how can Vishnu give a position above him when he is already the uh, above everybody else? Vishnu gave such a position as part of his flag. Therefore, Vishnu's flag has Garuda. But Garuda did not stop there. What did Garuda do? Why are we even talking about Vishnu and Garuda when we are supposed to be talking about Periyadvar? It is because Vishnu gave the boon to Garuda. But Garuda said, I will offer a boon to you. Garuda told Vishnu, I will give you a boon. Vishnu agreed. Vishnu asked Garuda to become his Vahana. That was the boon asked by Vishnu. And Garuda gave it. Think about it. That Garuda, who could not lift a finger of Vishnu's hand by himself and is actually going to carry Vishnu only because Vishnu himself is going to make himself light enough for Garuda to carry him. How could that Garuda give a boon to Vishnu? When we talk about Madhu and Kaithaba giving a boon to Vishnu, there they are doing it out of absolute arrogance. Vishnu uses it to kill them. In the case of Garuda, Garuda was not an evil being. He was a very good being. But Garuda has also offered Vishnu a boon and Vishnu asks for it. Does Vishnu really have to ask for it? He doesn't. Yet, Vishnu honors Garuda by asking a boon from Garuda. So how do we take it? We take it as Leela. When Garuda appears to give a blessing to Vishnu, it is not really a blessing to Vishnu. It is a blessing to Garuda only. Garuda carrying Vishnu is not a blessing for Vishnu. It is a blessing for Garuda. In the exact same way, we should look at 
the alvars pasura the verse of the alvar where he appears to bless paramatma it actually shows us how much the alvar has been blessed by vishnu it does not really show how vishnu is getting blessings it shows how the alvar is being blessed by vishnu the alvar he starts the tirupalla and with the word pallandu why the word pallandu we said pallandu means many years but the way he says pallandu pallandu pallairat and palakoti nurairam when he says that way many years many years many thousands of years many crores of uh, hundreds of thousands of years what is he really trying to arrive at he is trying to arrive at infinite years may for infinite years ever uh, you have all the safety and happiness in that way he is appearing to bless but look at what is there inside that same verse mallanda tintol manivanna un sevadi sevvitirukkap what is the alvar saying he says hey bhagavan you have such powerful shoulders shoulders that are powerful enough to kill enemies like mushtika and chanura does periyalvar have a greater power than that no he doesn't he is praising bhagavan he says you have shoulders that are powerful enough to kill enemies like mushtika and chanura now he says may they be well for thousands and thousands of years or for crores of thousand crores of hundreds of thousands of years for eternity that is then he says your uh, lotus feet your lotus feet which are uh, reddish may your feet also have no problem at all for eternity then he says adiyo modu with us sheshas with us sevakas with us dasas of yours here after appearing to bless bhagavan periyalvar is saying that he is a dasa of bhagavan adiyo modum ninnodum pirivindri aayiram pallandu how is that going to work if you are a dasa then how are you able to bless him hmm? we have given the answer already but there is a little more to the answer the little more we will come to it at the end of this verse he says you have an eternal relationship with us what is that relationship you are the sheshi we are your sheshas you are the swami we are your sevakas may this relationship also last for eternity without any hindrance madivai ninvala marbinel vaalgindra mangayum palla the young ever young beautiful shri devi is sitting on the lotus on the vakshasthala of bhagavan vakshasthala is on the right side of bhagavan's chest so vala marbinil vaalgindra mangayum pallandu that mangai is shri devi vala marb the right side of the chest there she is residing for eternity right 
in that way bhagavan is described and praised in the puranas so vadivar sodivalatturayum sudarajiyum pallandu he says it is not just that you have you have such powerful shoulders lotus red feet and are the swami of all of us on the right side of your chest you have sri devi and a little further away if i look if i go to the topmost part of your hand the right hand what are you holding you are holding the sudarshana chakra how is that sudarshana chakra vadivar sodi valaturayu sodi means jyoti it is glittering it is giving so much light it is bright how do we explain sudarshana sudarshana mahajwala surya koti samaprabha sudarshana can give light that is equivalent to crores of suryas crores of suns it is indeed with this sudarshana chakra that in krishna avatar bhagavan was able to block the sun do you know what happened there was a person called jayadratha jayadratha had got invincible for one day for that one day of the battle he would be invincible using that boon jayadratha ensured that arjuna's son abhimanyu is killed they all plotted together the kauravas they executed a grand plan when abhimanyu died arjuna lost all his senses he declared loudly if by tomorrow sunset i do not kill jayadratha i will jump into fire and kill myself which arjuna that arjuna who has been taught the entirety of bhagavad gita that arjuna who has been given complete atma gyan what is the atma what is the nature what is paramatma what is the purpose of the jivatma how to go and attain paramatma what are the different ways what is karma yoga what is gnana yoga what is bhakti yoga everything has been taught by krishna to arjuna but at that moment arjuna forgot himself and forgetting himself completely arjuna went and declared that he will take revenge by killing jayadratha by sunset the next day if i don't kill him by tomorrow sunset i will kill myself in that way he made a pledge having heard the pledge the kaurava has thought oh this is the easiest thing on earth let us hide jayadratha for the day let arjuna keep searching for him he will never find jayadratha then by the end of the day he will go and commit suicide that's all when you act out of emotions you make wrong decisions and many times the wrong decisions made by humans are such that they are irreversible and also irreparable i cannot change i cannot go back to the past and change remove the crimes that i have committed nor can i repair the damage that has been caused by my crimes arjuna was trapped in such a kind of a situation he could not travel to the past and undo his pledge but he could not fulfill his pledge also he could not find jayadratha as he couldn't find jayadratha he thought everything is going to be lost what am i going to do i have no other way when we realize that we cannot do things by ourselves that is when we surrender to bhagavan unfortunately we should naturally surrender to bhagavan however most of us behave in such a way that we will try things by ourselves and when nothing works we pray to bhagavan and there are some other people they go to bhagavan and they pray they say i will give you this i will give you that i will put 1000 rupees into uh, uh, the temple uh, hundi now you come and give me uh, all the blessings but uh, it doesn't work that way right uh, 
So there are different kinds of people. Then there are some kinds of people who would pray to Bhagavan but then do nothing. Oh, give me full marks in exams. Give me full marks in exams. But I will not study. Why? I have prayed to Bhagavan. Arjuna, which kind was he? He was the kind that would try everything, become a major failure and then in the last minute when nothing can save him, he would go and surrender to Bhagavan. At that time, Bhagavan helps him. How did Krishna help him? He took the Sudarshana Chakra, that glittering Sudarshana Chakra, that Sudarshana Chakra, which is brighter than a hundred thousand billion suns. He used the Sudarshana Chakra to block the sun. In front of Sudarshana's brightness, the sun's brightness did not work. And Sudarshana, having complete control of the light, made the sky seem like it was twilight. The color of the sky changed into that of twilight. People thought the sun is setting. Sunset came. Yes, now Jayadrata can come out. Let us, uh, Jayadrata himself thought, let me go outside and have the splendid sight of Arjuna committing suicide. Arjuna also thought, sunset has arrived. Who understands Krishna Leela properly? We know the story completely. We don't have a surprise. However, a normal person would think, if sunset comes, Arjuna would die. Krishna should prevent the sunset. But instead of preventing the sunset, Krishna creates a sunset sooner than the original sunset. Look at how Krishna is playing. What should he have ideally done? Like what that Nityananda says, I delayed sunrise. In that way, Krishna should have said that I will delay sunset. But he did not delay sunset. Instead, he caused what appeared to be a sunset much before the original sunset itself. That was the Leela of Krishna. Arjuna thought the sun is setting. I have not found Jayadrata. Let me go and commit suicide. He goes near the fire. Jayadrata comes out to see him. Correctly at that time, Krishna removes the Sudarshana Chakra and tells Arjuna, look, there is Jayadrata. Immediately shoot him. <laughs> and Arjuna shoots him. Of course, the story is much longer. The head is cut in such a way that it goes and falls at the hands of Jayadrata's father, so on. It goes. But what we have here is the fact that Sudarshana Chakra protects us. How does it protect us? The Sudarshana Chakra not only kills evil Asuras like Shishupala, it also protects us in countless other ways. That Sudarshana, which is Bhaskara Koti Tulya, as praised by Adi Shankaracharya in Panchayudha Stotra, Sudarshanam Bhaskara Koti Tulyam, he says. Right? So, it removes not only physical enemies, but also it removes bad situations, like the situation that came for Arjuna. It also removes Ajnana. It removes ignorance. And therefore, it protects us. It protects us from evil people. It protects us from bad effects of karma. It protects us from rajoguna and tamoguna. Gives us sattvaguna. Gives us bhakti. It shows us the marga towards Vishnu. With all its brightness, it highlights the marga towards Vishnu and helps us to go and attain moksha. That is the greatness of the Sudarshana Chakra. And that Sudarshana Chakra, by wielding that Sudarshana Chakra, Bhagavan is indicating that he is always ready to give all of that blessing to us. So, what does Periyadvar say? Periyadvar says, Vadivar Sodhivala Turayu Sudarajyum Pallande. Adi means Sudarshana Chakra. He is referring to the Sudarshana Chakra there. Adi means Chakra. He says, may that Sudarshana Chakra also be eternally in good condition. 
தென் படைப்போர் புக்கு முழங்கும் அப்பாஞ்சஜன்யமும் பல்லாண்டு அப்பாஞ்சஜன்யமும் பல்லாண்டு தட் பாஞ்சஜன்ய விச் தட் காஞ்ச் தட் சங்க ஆஃப் விஷ்ணு ஹூ சவுண்ட்ஸ் மேக் ஆல் தி எனிமிஸ் ட்ரெம்பிள் இன் வார் தி எனிமிஸ் ட்ரெம்பிள் when they hear the sound of panchajanya may that panchajanya also eternally stay without any kind of problem this is how the advar is praising so who all is he praising hmm? he is praising uh, he is blessing bhagavan he is blessing uh, bhagavan's feet he is blessing the relationship that bhagavan has with others he is blessing Uh, his eternal consort he is blessing sugarshana chakra he is blessing panchajanya how much tapobala that does the advar have that he is blessing uh, not only bhagavan but also everybody who is there with him the thing is we should understand what exactly happened in the case of the advar when the advar saw bhagavan in this way he totally got lost in the divine beauty of bhagavan in the divine beauty of the sight that he saw the arvar got immersed and therefore therefore the arvar wanted to remain in that situation this is so amazing look at this look at his feet look at the shri devi he is having on his vakshasthala look at the sudarshana chakra that is there with him look at the shankha periyadvar wanted to see that continuously being drenched in that side he said may it be there eternally may nothing no may no problem come to it like how people who are extremely thirsty they would not have water but they would say water water in that way periyadvar who did not really have any qualification to give blessings to bhagavan he is the one to whom bhagavan should have said palland but he ended up saying palland palland so in this manner out of bhakti out of atyanta bhakti the alvar recited a tirupalland as we call it the first verse of the tirupalland is what we saw as the the explanation of the first verse is what is given in this slide now let us look at some other teachings of periyarvar tirumul what all has been taught a lot of things have been discussed in periyarvar tirumul the sheshatva of jeevas in tirupallanda itself it was presented the need for the jeevas to leave ego ego comprising of ahankara and mamakara we have dis- uh, discussed ahankara and mamakara in detail before we will not get into them again but there is a fundamental need to leave both of them you stop thinking about yourself think only about bhagavan and pray to him pray to him to get out of samsara sagara if you pray to him you can get out of all your problems you can get out of this samsara which is imperfect and you can get the state of moksha you can get the state of moksha which is eternal which is full of bliss so in this way he is 
giving us advice. Periyarva Tirumuri also talks about a lot of other things. It talks about Krishna Avatar. Periyarvar Tirumuri has 473 verses in total. It is quite big, right? Clearly, more than 10% of the Divya Prabandham. The Divya Prabandham has 4000 verses. Inside that, this has 473 verses. We would take it as what? Uh, uh, clearly more than 400, right? So it is clearly more than uh, 10 percent of the uh, songs. 10 percent of 400 by 4000 is 400. This is more than that. This is clearly more than 460. Right. Uh, 440 would be uh, 11 percent. So it is more than 11 percent also. Anyway. So this Arva, he talks about Krishna's birth. Uh, he talks about how when Krishna was born there was a complete stampede. The baby looked so divine that everybody started rushing to look at the baby. Where of course, not in the prison, but after the, the exchange of babies had taken place. People were celebrating the birth of Krishna. They were throwing turmeric and oil. This made the floor even more slippery. In this manner, the Alvar imagines the birth of Krishna itself. As a small boy, he was asked to take care of the cows. At that time, how did Krishna behave? What did Krishna look like? How uh, charming and attractive he was? And how did he behave? What all are the Leelas that he did? The devatas gave all sorts of gifts. Yashoda, uh, composing verses like Yashoda, the Alvar says, go and look at the child. Let me look at the sky. What is there in the night sky? Oh, the moon. Oh, Chandra Deva, you also come. You come and see this child. This child is dancing with his baby steps. Come and look at it. In this way, she invites everyone and she celebrates Krishna. Come to me, O Krishna. Embrace me. As you dance, marks of the Shankha and Chakra can be seen on the floor. In this manner, he is saying, did Yashoda really see Shankha and Chakra marks on the floor when Krishna danced? Not really. But, I mean, the description is not given that. But, the Alvar, knowing Krishna to be who he is, is able to see and infer the divinity of the child the way Yashoda could not infer. So, how she wanted to uh, perform the samskara of piercing the ear of Krishna and uh, how uh, every time uh, Krishna was reluctant to do whatever she wanted Krishna to do. For example, Krishna would go and play in the mud 
he would make his entire body muddy. But when Yashoda says, come let us have a bath, you take a bath so that you are clean, Krishna would not come. He would say, no, I want, I like this. He would love to be dirty. He would love to be with the mud. And Yashoda would have a very, very hard time in convincing Krishna. In this way, we are seeing Yashoda says, Yashoda says, you come. If you come and take bath, this will happen. Krishna says, no need. She says, that will happen. He says, no need. In, the, in this way, Krishna keeps rejecting. Finally, Yashoda talks about Napinnai. Napinnai, some people in North India appear to believe that Napinnai is the same as Radha. However, uh, that is uh, not what we really believe in. Napinnai was in a way a cousin sister of Krishna. Who was Napinnai? She uh, was uh, the one of the Ashtabharyas. She was not really uh, Radha. But Napinnai was so dear to Krishna. How dear? When Yashoda said, you took butter. You ate butter. You put butter all over your face. Then you went and played in the mud. With all of that, your body is going to itch. I have prepared your bath. Come and take the bath. Otherwise, you will not be able to sleep at night. But Krishna says no. Right? But when Yashoda says, if you don't come and take bath, Napinnai will laugh at you and make fun of you. Then Krishna runs to Yashoda. Until then, he was chanting there. Each reason told by Yashoda was ignored by Krishna. But when she mentioned Napinnai, and said Napinnai would laugh at you, Krishna ran towards Yashoda. That shows the uh, extent to which uh, Krishna loved Napinnai. But who is this Napinnai? Napinnai is identified as Nagnajiti. Nagnajiti her story is presented in the Puranas. She is an incarnation of Neela Devi. Who is Neela Devi? She is another aspect of Lakshmi Devi only. There are Shri Devi, Bhumi Devi and Neela Devi. If you go to Sri Rangam, you can see Bhagavan with all the three consorts. Neela Devi is not as popular. Hence, maybe in Tirupati, if you see photos of Tirupati, you, you, Utsavar, you might not see so easily. But this Neela is praised in the Vedas itself. There is a separate Sukta, Neela Sutta and so on. So, Neela Devi, just like how Sri Devi and Bhu Devi had taken avatars, right? We already know there were Rukmini and Satyabhama. Right? In the same way, there was a person called Nagnajit. His daughter is called Nagnajiti. Nagnajit kept a Swayamara for his daughter. In those days, the might of Kshatriyas would be decided based on how good they are with Astras and Shastras. So, for example, in the Swayamara of Draupadi, the requirement was you should shoot the arrow at uh, correctly at the eye of the fish that is rotating by looking at the reflection of that fish in water. Right? A very difficult test, but it is a test about how good you are with weapons. If you are a Brahman, you would be expected to be a master of the Vedas. Can you recite the Panchadi perfectly? How well can you recite the Vedas? 
This used to be the criterion used to judge Brahmana boys before giving the daughter away in marriage. In the case of Vaishyas, one of the more, most popular practices was to ask the boys to tame the bull. Bull taming. These days in Tamil Nadu, uh, they call it, uh, uh, they call a uh, sport as Jallikat, where a bull has to be tamed by uh, a man. Of course, they don't use it as part of Swayamvara, but it does appear to have a long history. They call it Air Tadvudal. But that Air Tadvudal has totally a Sanatani background, wherein the Vaishyas used to keep it to decide who would win the Swayamvara of the daughter. So in that way, Nagnajit had organized the Swayamvara. There, there were bulls. But inside the bulls, Asuras entered. Asuras sent by Kamsa entered the bulls. Knowing that Krishna would participate and that Krishna should be killed. But the opposite ended up happening. All the Asuras got defeated by Krishna. And Krishna got the hands of Nagnajiti, who became his wife. This story is presented in the Puranas. This uh, Nagnajiti is the one we call as Napinnai. And uh, this uh, Napinnai is the one praised by Periyarvar here. I had to give this clarification. Hmm? But uh, this famous uh, set of 10 verses where Yashoda uh, tries to convince Krishna and make him take bath and everything. That is called Niratta. Uh, it is uh, recited uh, in pujas also during Tiruvaradhana. Uh, often in temples uh, we can hear it get recited. But as Krishna grew on, his uh, actions were intolerable. He would keep stealing he, uh, butter. He would keep breaking pots. Uh, he would play pranks on people. Uh, he would uh, uh, he would play too much. But at the same time, he would uh, also have a very melodious flute that would attract every single being. He would lift the entire Govardhana Parvata. He would humble the Kaliya snake by dancing on it. Uh, all of that would also be done by Krishna. So the Alvar has picturized every single thing and has composed verses describing not only the birth and growth, but also the exploits of Krishna. The Alvar also uh, takes uh, a description of Ramavatara in uh, his verses. So, uh, he talks about uh, Hanuman, uh, Hanuman meeting Sita Devi and uh, explaining about Rama's relationship with her. Uh, in that way, or even uh, in like in the case of Krishna, how Krishna and Rukmini are described. And there is a very a great element of uh, poetic, uh, descriptive uh, beauty there. If you read the verses, learn the meaning, and then visualize it, it would be very, very uh, enjoyable. Uh, other things that are discussed in Periyarvat Tirumuri, concept-wise, Sharanagati, of course, Nama Sankirtana, reciting the names of Bhagavan, the greatness of Nama Sankirtana is uh, explained. Uh, keep reciting the names Keshava, Purushottama, and so on. It is superior to everything else. The Alvar says that way. Always remember Bhagavan. Never uh, forget him. Yet, even if by chance, you are not able to remember. Given that you have performed Nagati, Bhagavan will take care of you. 
right? In Varaha Purana, Varaha Purana Bhagavan had said, Sthite manasi susvasthe sharire satiyo naraha. Dhatu samye sthite smarta vishwarupa bhramana jaka. Tatastham vyamanam ashapashana samudham. Aham smarami mad bhaktam mayami paramana jaka. The same thing, the Advar is saying, at the time of death, maybe I might not remember you. But right now, when my senses are still in my control, sthite manasi, when my mind is firm and my senses are still in control, I am healthy enough to think properly. Susvaste. I am remembering you right now. It is Bhagavan's responsibility to take care of us, right? Bhagavan said, Aham smarami mad bhaktam, nayami paramam gatil. I remember my bhakta and grant the supreme abode. So this is uh, reminded to us by the Adva when he says that uh, for that time when I am supposed to die, when I might not remember, at that time I might not be able to remember you. So now itself I am saying, I said now itself that I am remembering you, I am surrendering to you. In that way, the Advar teaches the concept of Sharanagati. Uh, there are a number of uh, temples also uh, celebrated in uh, uh, his uh, Tirumudi. We see Tirukoshti uh, or Tirumalirunjolai, Tirukarnagudi, Sri Rangam, and towards the end. Uh, he also uh, prays to the Tirupati, the uh, Archa Vigraha, the Srinivasa of Tirupati. He prays to Bhagavan also. He says, once you have accepted me, there will be no Punarjanma for me. The ocean will become dry. The ocean of samsara Samsara Sagara, that will become dry. I will not drown in Samsara Sagara. The forest of my Papa Karmas, that forest will also be fully burned. I have not committed one or two sins. My sins are huge, like a large forest. But the entire forest will also get burned. And the nectar of Jnana will flow non-stop to me. In this way, the Alvar is praying to Bhagavan. Let us remember how Bhagavan looks in Tirupati, the Archamurti at Tirupati. What, how does it look? If you try to recall, you would notice that the two hands of the Archa Vigraha in Tirupati, one hand would point towards the feet of Bhagavan, indicating that we should look at the holy feet of Bhagavan and surrender to that lotus feet. The other hand would appear to be showing the hip level. Correct? So, uh, it is uh, these uh, kinds of uh, positions, the way he is keeping his hands, uh, they are called Varada Hasta and uh, uh, Katya Vilambita Hasta. Uh, Varada Hasta means you surrender to my feet. It is showing his feet. So, you fall at my feet. If you fall at my feet, you will get the boons. What boons? As the Advar said, I will get Jnana all my sins will get burned. I will get out of Samsara Sagara. This Samsara Sagara is indicated by the other hand. It shows that Bhagavan will not allow the Samsara Sagara to rise beyond the hip level. So you will be able to walk through it. It is not You, you will not be able to drown in it. So, the Samsara Sagara, which is 
otherwise very difficult to cross as Shankaracharya, as uh, Bhajagovindam. In Bhajagovindam, there is a shloka, right? Uh, they say it was uh, uh, this uh, particular shloka. I don't know whether Adi Shankaracharya composed or somebody later composed it, but it is a beautiful shloka. Iha samsare bahu dustare kripaya pare pahi murare, it says. So this samsara is very, very difficult to cross. Correct? But if you perform sharanagati to Murari, if you perform sharanagati to Bhagavan, that Krishna, who came as Srinivasa at Tirupati, then you will be able to cross it. That is again reminded to us by the Alvar at the end of the Tirumuri as well. So with this, I would like to conclude today's class. If there is any question, feel free to let me know. And the way you described uh, the Tiruputi, uh, uh, I also was a real eye opener. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, in most temples, you don't see his hand that way. Srinivasa especially has hands that way. In other temples, you usually see Abhaya Hasta. Right? He keeps uh, just the stop kind of a symbol. Uh, that uh, We call it as Abhaya Hasta, implying that uh, you stop, all your worries stop here. I will grant you protection. There is no need for you to worry. That is what it means. But Tirupati, uh, in, at Tirupati, he keeps his hands differently. Some people question how is it possible for him to keep his hands in this way. Is he really Vishnu? Uh, mm. is, why are his hands so different? But mm. uh, there is an actual explanation for it. Uh, mm. The whole concept of Sharanagati. <laughs> but just uh, looking itself, the Darshanam itself gives you so much uh, good feeling. Yes, yes. That's what I feel, yes. Entering that place itself gives a little bit. I know. Just even if it is a few seconds or few minutes, uh, we are usually enthralled just looking there and we feel so good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. Shri Vatsa, 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 Shri Vatsa,